Derek Shulman talks about signing Bon Jovi to their first record contract. I'm John Bowden from RockHistoryMusic.com. Derek Shulman was the lead singer of the band Gentle Giant, a prog rock band that literally expanded my boundaries from 1970 to 1980. That's when the band broke up and the guys went their separate ways. A lot of the members of the band stayed in music. Derek Shulman, however, became a record executive, and he was good at his job. But his biggest claim to fame, signing Bon Jovi. Okay, so I joined Polygram and, and uh, as, as, as my, my, my day job, if you like, my first ever day job. Um, and uh, I think the third month I was there, um, it was within a very short period of time, um, an attorney from Philadelphia uh, called me through our business affairs guys and said, I've got this kid, John Bon Jovi, who's got a song on a sampler for a radio station, WAPP, and there's a song called Runaway on it. You might want to listen to it. So he sent me the sampler, actually. He sent me the album, WAPP, the album. I listened to the song. I said, damn, this is great. What a great song. So I called him back and I, I said, so who's this John Bon Jovi? And he said, well, he's a kid in Jersey. He's going to put a band together. Uh, and so I, he put me together with him and his mom and dad in, in Sayreville, New Jersey. And uh, I went down to meet with him and he, uh, we, we got along really well. And he was telling me he was working at the power station with his second cousin, uh, Tony Bon Jovi. Uh, he's doing some like day stuff and he got this song done by some uh, extra extraneous musicians and he was the singer uh, but other players were in the band so I said are you going to put a band together I said well I'd like to yeah so I said well what other songs do you have and he played me a couple of other songs and they were good so you know what I did was I said so let me know when you put a band together he did within a very like a week uh, he had David David Rashbaum who became David Bryan uh, his school friend and Tico we got from uh, Frankie and the Knockouts. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and they put a showcase on for me at the, uh, I can't remember what club it was. And they were, they, were, they were really good. Not great, but really good. And John, but John had an unbelievable drive to make it. I've, you couldn't bottle what he had to know where he wanted to go and absolutely not, nothing would get in his way. And at that time, it, it wasn't Bon Jovi. It was still John Bon Jovi who worked at the power station. But even then, he knew what he wanted to be. And, you know, for not better or worse, I think I, I helped him because I helped kind of put the band together, helped him, you know, with the, with the album, getting the right producers, uh, helped him get the manager, uh, Doc McGee. And because I came from my world which is the artist world and knowing what you need to have to to have success you like it, in that world um so uh we made the first album runaway was on the album did quite well mm -hmm. uh we made the second album and and, and dot mcgee became the manager who i introduced him to um got him on the road and before that effectively uh asked him what he wanted to be because he was still in the process of being a pop star or a rock star, but Doc was smart enough to get him out there with the Sorkins, with Kiss, with the, the big rock bands. And John was like a sponge. He learned everything about how to come across as a rock star, as well as being a, a pop star. And um, and on the third album, thankfully, I, I got him together with a, a Desmond, Desmond Child to write some of the better hit songs, the best known songs that John I put together, I put him together with uh, Bruce and, and Bob in, in Vancouver, Bruce Fairburn and Bob Rock. And uh, on the third album, the Slippery When Wet was made. And um, from then on, his career was done. I mean, it was, it was over. I knew, I knew this was going to be massive. When Slippery When Wet, yeah, when, when, when you heard the finished product, I mean, uh, do you usually get a feeling when you're working with a band and you hear a finished product, do you usually you think, like, there's no way this can fail? Very rare, but honestly, very rarely. But I, I've had it. But I've had it. Let me think. So, yeah, Slippery Woman, I absolutely knew, hundred percent, that it was going to be a massive, massive album. The first album in Cinderella, I knew. 
because I, I used to sign Cinderella. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about the albums I've been involved in and the other side of the business, if you like. Um, ACDC, uh, Razor's Edge. When I, I put them back in the studio with the same team, by the way, in Vancouver, uh, I knew that was going to work. Um, let me think here. Uh, very rare that, you, you, that you're 100% sure. Pantera, I, Pantera, I knew were going to be massive. Even though they had no chance to get on MTV, even though they had no chance to get on radio. But I went to see them in a club in, in, uh, in Texas, you know, hearing the, 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 hearing the music and looking at a videotape and going there as a, as a, as a president of a company. And after three songs of, of Pantera, I was a fan. I wasn't just looking at this band saying, "Holy shit!" I, I, you know, I was. I, I didn't. I didn't jump in the mosh pit, but I said, "Okay, this is a band that, that if they play one place, they're going to they're going to triple the audience in three months." And and I knew when they when they put Cowboys from Hell together, it was going to work. Obviously, other things have happened in this side of the business that I thought was should have been big that weren't as well. So there's a yin and yang to that too. Bon Jovi are currently leading in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame votes. Looks like they may get in this year. The new remixed Gentle Giant album, which features songs from their first three albums, has just been released, remixed by a man we know very well from Porcupine Tree, Stephen Wilson. It's called Three Piece Suite, and it's available now. We'll have more of our conversation with Derek Shulman coming up next week. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. This is Rock History Music.